Hey, this is Kat, and today I'm going to be talking about Curry Howard correspondence. So, to sum it up in a single sentence, proofs are programs, and programs are proofs. In a certain sense, which I'll be coming back to later. So to be more specific, computational types are analogous to propositions, where the proposition holds if there exists a value of the type. Programs are analogous to proofs, where the inputs to a function are analogous to a proof's premise, and the return type of the function is analogous to the proof statement. So writing a proof is the same as showing that the type of the corresponding function is inhabited. And to show what analogous means in this context, let's take a look at an example in the formal proof management system, COC. Uh, the syntax takes some getting used to, but we can start with a simple proof that for all p and q, p and q implies p. To show this logically, we first introduce the variables p and q, as well as the assumption that p and q holds. This leaves us with the goal of proving p true. Then we use the destruct tactic on the hypothesis that p and q holds, because we hypothesis that if p and q is true, then p and q must be true individually. We'll call the hypothesis that p holds hp, and the hypothesis that q holds, uh, actually we can throw that one away, we won't need it. Then we apply hypothesis hp to our goal, finishing our proof. Now let's take a look at what we just proved using the print command. What looked like a logical proof is actually a function. This function takes p and q of type prop, which is Cox type that represents propositions, and p, q, and of type p and q, our assumption for a logical proof. The function pattern matches p, q, and against conj hp wildcard. You can think of p and q as being syntactic sugar for product type conj, which is a left element p and a right element q. The function returns hp, which is the variable name that the pattern match is bound to the first element of our conj type. So for any element of type p and q, it returns p. Let's rewrite this program as OCaml code. We can see how different parts of our theorem map directly to different parts of the code. A logical implication becomes a function that takes the implication's premises and produces the implication's results. Logical and becomes a pair, which is effectively the conj type that we saw in Cock. To represent the logical statement p or q, we define a sum type which has two variants. The name of the values aren't important, but we call them left and right, representing the left and right hand sides of an or statement. We use the sum type for or because we can prove p or q either by assuming p or assuming q. This is equivalent to saying that p implies p or q. Alternatively, the q implies p or q. In computational terms, we should be able to define functions that construct the or data type by taking a value of type p or q. Here are two functions that do just that. On the other hand, constructing a value of type p and q requires us to assume both p and q. This program require, uh, requires values of type p and q as inputs. We can even define true and false computationally. True always holds no matter what our premises are, so it should be some trivial inhabited type, like unit. False should never hold, so no values of its type should actually exist. F type checks but cannot actually be evaluated. The nope field is analogous to the logical statement, for all x, x holds which can't be true because there are some logical propositions x that do not hold. We can represent the logical negation of p as p implies false. Intuitively, this means that p can't be true, because if it were, we'd be able to apply the, the implication and logically imply that false must hold. Following the rule for implication, the computational equivalent of negated p is a function from p to the type void that we defined in the previous slide. We can now use our equivalents for true, false, logical implication, and, or, and negation to define relationships between more complicated propositions and programs. But coming back to the asterisk, some things that seem like they could be proved are impossible to prove in Cock without using external libraries, like law of excluded middle, which means that p holds or not p must hold. It is impossible to write an anal analogous function because functions require a single deterministic output, and we don't know specifically whether p or not p holds, just that one of them must hold. The logic the cock works for is called constructive logic, because proofs are given as processes for constructing a conclusion, given the proof's arguments as inputs. 
the law of excluded middle holds under a different logical system called classical logic. Why is Curry-Howard correspondence useful? Some concepts are easier to think about in terms of logic, like program specifications. When writing down the specifications for a list reversal function, we use statements like, for all lists x, the length of rev x is equal to the length of x, and rev x is the empty list if and only if x is the empty list. But proving such statements by hand can be tedious. There's a large body of work on automating the process of extracting programs of the type that correspond to the proof we want, allowing us to formally verify correctness. So that's about it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.